Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by thanking our young leader and chairman of the party that I was born into, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, for gracing us uh, uh, in this event and for chairing this um, uh, book, uh, book launch event. Um, your coming to this event not only demonstrates your commitment to the issue being discussed, that is honor-based violence against men, women and girls, but also to engage with the intellectuals, professionals and activists who are here today, who are best placed to trigger any social and political change. I would also like to thank um, Agas Raj Durani Sahab, the speaker of uh, Sindh Assembly, for coming all the way from Shikarpur. It's a very long drive and thank you very much for uh, being here. And of course, uh, I want to thank our host, um, uh, Ahmed Ali Shah Sahab, who has uh, given us this uh, amazing space, but also given us an opportunity to meet and engage with Pakistan's very precious uh, civil society and uh, with the professionals who are, who are present here. Um, I also want to thank the chairperson of the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, uh, Zora Yusuf, who has made a, a very um, important uh, uh, speech and has enlightened us with her um, uh, with uh, uh, um, uh, the human rights perspective on this issue. And of course, I'm delighted to see, uh, and it's the surprise of the day, to see um, Bakhtawar. It's so good for you to be with us. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy, and I do think that it's a su surprise of the day for me. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Asif Aslam Saab. You are a friend uh, and a colleague, and thank you for taking uh, us through the memory lane. Um, and thank you very much for Nurul Dasha, who made the revolutionary speech of the day. Today, she was our revolutionary. And uh, of course, um, Adal Sumro. And I hope I have not left uh, anybody out. Uh, of course, Amina. How can I forget Amina? <laughs> she is the lady who, uh, again, is a friend, uh, in many ways a mentor as well. And um, uh, again, behind this whole venture, Anna Unmasked would not have been possible without her. I think she was sometimes more committed than me to have this thesis published. And I had her phone calls all these years. When are we seeing your book? When are we seeing your draft? Why isn't it here? So thank you very much for finally publishing it. And many, many thanks to you all. Uh, there's family here. There are friends there, the colleagues here, the people I've worked with. There are people from my area, from Khairpurt. So thank you all for being here. And I'll just make some very few comments, and then I'm, we're all waiting very anxiously to hear our young uh, chairman um, uh, on his uh, uh, remarks on this issue. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this work, the work on this book involves my many roles and perspectives gathered over the years on a particular social custom and an honor-based practice called Karukari in Upper Sindh. And this work that I did was first as a firebrand journalist, then an activist, later as an academic, and today as a legislator. So my roles um, kept shifting. Now, four very strong, courageous women who have at each of these stages held my hand and mentored or guided me. And sad to say that these women are not present today. None of them are present today. None of them lives today although they live in my heart, and I'm sure in many of your hearts, they deserve special mention. Shaheed Mahatarma Benazir Bhutto, my political mentor, <laughs> and an exemplary and inspirational woman leader. Razia Bhatti, the editor of Newsline, who saw through the first story on this issue. And there's one lady who none of you know, Helen Calloway. She was an Oxford feminist and anthropologist who read the first draft of this book. And finally, my mother, Hussein Afroz, who made a fateful journey to this great city in search of education for her girls. All these women have passed away, but they have left lasting footprints for their followers, like myself, to emulate and take forward. And they've always, they will always be an inspiration for me as long as I live. And now a short story of how this book happened. As a journalist in Newsline, I wrote the first story on the issue of Karukari in Sindh. 
I went on to study this issue in Oxford University's Social and Cultural Anthropology Department. When I came back to do my field work, trained as an Oxford academia, I suddenly found myself as the Nazim of Khairpur, which was as much a surprise for me, but it was a bigger surprise for the people of Khairpur, who were totally not expecting a woman to head them. But this fateful turn can be credited to Shaheed Mohtarma Benazir Bhutto. It was her choice. And this is a secret that you know, I'm sharing with you, that it was her who wanted me to go there. And of course, my father assisted uh, in, this, uh, in this wish, and I was there uh, in Khairpur. And there were only two women Nazims. Uh, this is during Musharraf's times. The, uh, the other was Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari's aunt, uh, Mohtar Mafaryal Talpur. So it's just two of us. We got elected. Both of us were opposition Nazims because General Musharraf was in power and he had his own hand picked. And we were the opposition Nazims and we still managed to serve our people and be there. So after having been elected, I thought that this would be the end of my scholarly ambitions, my PhD, my Oxford years, and my research. But in the role of the Nazim, I lived and experienced all the issues that I had studied in anthropological theory. I faced tribal feuds, violent deaths, runaway brides, and dealt firsthand uh, and dealt at first-hand engagement with people, uh, uh, people's day-to-day -day conflicts. During Musharraf's time. Upper Sindh witnessed some of its most intense instances of violence, and some of these are documented here. So by God's design, this actually became my fieldwork. And the final product is this book. This is primarily an academic book written with an anthropological theories of honor and law. For the material and content in the book, my gratitude is for the people of Khairpur and for Upper Sindh, some of who are present here. This book seeks to draw connections between practices of violence and ideologies of peace, between victims and perpetrators, between custom and law, between state and society. It is not simply a book of upper synth, nor about Pakistan, but also about our globalized transnational world. The value of knowledge is in its comparative basis, and I have tried to provide comparative context as well. I have argued that customs can be reshaped and renewed in today's modern and postmodern times. They are not just a carryover of the past, they are also practices people invent and innovate. Ostensibly, this book is about violence against women and brutal killings in the name of honor, but it's equally about peace and rebuilding of lives and about hope and survival. How do people deal with violence? They create ceremonies of peace. How do warring tribes come together? They create systems of mediation. How do women victims deal with structures of subordination and threats of violence? They become even as victims agents of their own life. And how should this problem be addressed? And that's the big question mark for the evening. The parliament has recently enacted a law that may help plug easy acquittals. And here I want to remember Senator Sora Imam, who was a People's Party legislator, whose work must be recognized in this regard. My father spoke about changing the law, and Senator Sora Imam is the one who placed this law in the Senate. This law is a step forward. But as long as relatives have the power of forgiveness under the laws of Kisas and Diyat, mediations over murders, both inside and outside the law, will continue to occur. And this must change. Hence, the debate on social violence and criminal justice system must be ongoing. And this volume will hopefully provide more debate and a way forward so that we are able to initiate legal reforms as a whole and not piecemeal. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it took me 10 years to study honor and violence in Upper Sindh and another six to publish it. All these years, this material was stored away in my computer or in the Bodleian Library in Oxford. No one even saw it. Now it is out in the open, it is available, its content and knowledge is a joint heritage of myself as a writer and of all of you, the readers. The best return that I, as a writer, can hope for is that it creates a shared vision to help us move forward to end violence and injustice against men, women, and children in Sindh, Pakistan, and beyond by building blocks of good laws and strong social and political institutions. To all those who bought this book today, finally, I want to thank all of you. This is not a commercial venture for me. It is a social cause. 
the royalty from this book, which is a very modest sum, will be given to the trust uh, in my mother's name, which works on girls' education in my area. Once again, thank you for being here.